Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. If you've heard this term ITIL, ITIL certifications, and you're a little confused or lost about what it means, how to obtain them, then you're in the perfect place. We've brought in expert Mr. Terry Decker to explain these answers for us. Terry, when we look at ITIL, can you explain that to me and really why should I even care? What is ITIL? Great question. Uh, in very shorthand, ITIL is effectively embodying business skills for IT people, right? It's a very shorthand, but if you look at the at the PowerPoint here, you'll see that it actually has a definition. ITIL stands for IT Infrastructure Library, which is perhaps not that helpful. Uh, it also equals IT service management. Uh, once upon a time on an exam, the actual answer to the question, what is ITIL? Well, it was a collection of books, and that's how it started off. It was first; these books were first published uh, back in the '80s. They've gone certainly through some uh, approval uh, uh, improvements and upgrades uh, over the years, and it's now recognized as the preeminent best practice for IT service management worldwide. It's the go-to place for establishing a framework uh, to better manage IT services. Uh, the basic premise of ITIL is that if you have happier customers, then you're going to have more sustainable success as an IT organization, right? Uh, there's cost reductions are a big part of it, uh, being more efficient and, and cost effective, and coming up with a methodology for continually improving your services. So cost going down, quality going up equals happier customers and, again, more sustainable success for your IT organization. And the basic idea underpinning ITIL is that a service, an IT service, has a life cycle. And as we look at the life cycle, it's broken down into five stages, uh, as you see here on the screen. And these five stages also happen to correspond one-to-one -to, -one to a core publication. So they published a book called Service Strategy, Service Design, Service Transition, Service Operations, and Continual Service Improvement. And they describe these stages in the life cycle uh, in that chronological order, that you first come up with a, a great strategy, you then design it perfectly, and then transition it flawlessly, and then operate it without any imperfections. Uh, so uh, obviously that's kind of a pipe dream. There's always going to be need for improvement, so you wrap continual service improvement around all these stages to make sure that you're doing each of these stages very, very well. Right. So uh, depending on which course you're diving into, you could be focused on strategy, design, transition, operations, or, or CSI, or some combination of them uh, uh, both. Uh, it starts with uh, understanding uh, just what ITIL is trying to focus on. And it is really spanning all industry segments, whether it's manufacturing, pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals, universities, governments, uh, small towns, big cities, states. Uh, uh, military, government, uh, all sorts of organizations. It also spans type uh, organizational size and scope profiles, large and small, nonprofit, for profit, public and private. It's broadly adopted and supported by the industry. So, tool vendors are providing uh, ITIL friendly uh, tool solutions for, for managing uh, the various uh, data points that uh, underpin service management. Service providers are adopting ITIL. So your suppliers are potentially adopting ITIL. So this nature of it being a best practice means it's broadly adopted. And because it's broadly adopted, you can speak the same language, you can expect the same uh, sort of uh, approaches to solving problems and, and facing issues, right? Uh, and it's recognized and uh, also has a respected certification scheme. So as you consider these schemes, you got accreditation and certification. So uh, this, is just, you know, this pyramid is basically describing that there is an owner of this. Uh, it's a, a UK cabinet office in, in the United Kingdom. Uh, they actually own it. They have uh, hired an organization, a nonprofit organization called Axelos, to operate this training regime and examination regime on behalf of the, the owners. Uh, this, this cabinet office is, is similar to perhaps our U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uh, if you want to try to find an analog. Uh, and the nonprofit Axelos is basically administering the programs of curriculum, accreditation, and examination. Uh, they do so through exam institutes. Exam institutes are accredited by Axelos, and those exam institutes in turn accredit training organizations. And what IT Pro TV has done is they've partnered with an accredited training organization called uh, Passion IT Group. That's who I'm representing here. And Passion IT Group accredits me, 
Right? So that's the scheme of accreditation. So I follow uh, Passion IT Group's guidelines. They are then uh, uh, they are previously blessed by exam institutes, which are blessed by Axelos themselves, which is blessed by the owners. Right? Uh, accredited training is important because it means you can uh, take the accredited exams, the official exams, uh, and therefore get official credits and get your certificates as you move forward. Okay. All right, so the certification scheme all starts with foundation. You see here at the bottom, we'll work our way up through uh, the various paths you might consider taking, but it starts with foundation. In fact, it is a prerequisite. You can't get credit for any subsequent training or exams, I should say, without having had passed the foundation exam. So it has to start there. Uh, you see these numbers uh, orient you here. There's various numbers here. These are the numbers of credits you can get for passing the associated exams, uh, that is the exams that are associated with these trainings. So each one of these is a training opportunity, and each one of these is an exam opportunity. Passing the exam gets you these credits, right? So you have foundation. Everyone starts there. It surveys all stages of the life cycle, strategy, design, transition, operations, and CSI. It spans all of those and orients you to the overall framework, right? So there's memorization and concept uh, feedback. You take an exam associated with that, right? You can also take a practitioner course to get you three credits. And this particular course focuses on uh, techniques you might bring to bear for the adoption of ITIL. How would you go about adopting ITIL into your organization? And then not only adopting, but how would you go about adapting this framework to the reality of your, uh, of your environment? Uh, ITIL is not in, uh, intended to be prescriptive. It describes ways to succeed. And you need to use those ways as appropriate to your organization. So it's intended to be descriptive as opposed to prescriptive. It doesn't say thou shalt, thou must. It gives you a framework in which you can adapt. So practitioner is a great place to uh, begin formalizing methodology for how you would adopt and how would you adapt ITIL to your environment. Now, as we look up uh, through these other uh, potential courses, you'll see they're divided on the left between life cycle modules and capability modules. On the left, we have uh, uh, there are training courses associated with each of the stages in the life cycle. Just like we had those five books, we also have five courses that focus on each one of those books. Obviously, it's scratching the surface a little bit more deeply than foundation does. We're diving into the details of these stages in the life cycle of a service. So there's a course associated with each of those stages. There they are on the left, strategy design, transition operations, and CSI. And there is an exam associated with each of those courses. And each of these would give you three credits, right? On the right side here, we have what's called capability modules, which is a, a combination of multiple topics from more than one of the books over here. As an example, we have service offerings and agreements, right? Service offerings and agreements uh, uh, focuses and brings things from service strategy and service design, as an example. So these capability modules, taking from multiple source books, combines them into some operational relevant way. Right? Uh, they uh, are a little bit longer courses, and they also get you a little bit more credits. They're worth four credits each. So if you're marching toward, or think you want to march toward, uh, an ITIL expert credential, you need to amass credits. Again, these are the credit schemes here. right? Once you have a minimum of 17 credits, you are eligible to set what's called the capstone course, MALC, Managing Across the Life Cycle. With 17 credits at least under your belt, you're eligible to set this course and set this exam, and passing it gives you five more credits. So with that minimum of 17 plus the five, you have the number of credits of 22 that gives you the credential of expert. Effectively, what happens is, upon the passing of the um, MALC exam, assuming you have at least 17 credits before you uh, pass that exam, uh, you are granted both a certificate for MALC and an expert certificate. Each one of these could be considered a certification. Uh, you could certainly put in your signature block, you know, ITIL uh, Foundations, comma, OSA, or Service Strategy, or 
uh, those types of things. So you can add the letters as you wish. Ultimately, you can collect these letters and become an ITIL expert. Right. The ITIL master at the top uh, is not widely sought after in the marketplace. Uh, it's, there's very few of them. Uh, it is more of a, uh, as you can see, it's described there as an assessment qualification. Uh, you write a paper uh, describing your uh, adoption and adaptation of ITIL in a real world environment uh, with lots of pretty graphics and, and, and pretty pictures and good explanations. And those uh, will demonstrate, hopefully, your mastery of ITIL. You submit your paper along with a check for $5,000 to the accrediting agency and they will review it, perhaps give you an opportunity to argue it, and if you pass, then you can be considered a master. If not, they'll send you back some feedback along with suggestions for improvement. You can send those improvements back along with another check and uh, go, uh, continue that iteratively if you wish. Uh, I myself, I'm on the fence about becoming an ITIL master. I'd love to be able to say, snatch the pebble from my hand, grasshopper, but uh, uh, that $5,000 is kind of a delimiter for me. I got good war stories. I've had plenty of years of experience, and I'm not a bad writer and could perhaps find the graphics and, and make it work, uh, but I'm not sure uh, about the marketplace supporting that kind of investment at this time. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, I don't want to shortchange anyone's aspirations. If you want to go for master, I'd be happy to help you get there uh, uh, if, should that come to pass. All right, Terry, thank you for explaining that. I was uh, just saying ITIL expert initially, but I didn't know that that was the actual title there. Yeah, do you have it. any other information you'd like to share with us today? I do, uh, just a little bit more regarding the exams themselves. Uh, first of all, the exams uh, typically focus on, uh, uh, for the foundation exam, just knowing things, uh, re, you know, rote memorization of concepts and words. The intermediate level exams, where you're talking about life cycle modules or capability modules, uh, they require you to, to provide some sort of analysis or application of that knowledge. So they're a bit more difficult uh, in terms of uh, time management as you're taking the exam, et cetera. If you look at the graphic here, you kind of do a, a comparison between that very early one, the foundation exam, which is 40 questions. You get 60 minutes to take it. Uh, there's there are multiple choice, A, B, C, or D, and there's only one correct answer. You got 60 minutes to take it, and you got to get a 65%. That's 26 out of the 40. Right, a typical exam, right, uh, basically. Uh, intermediate level exams, uh, since they're asking you to do some analysis and application of knowledge, are scenario based. So you'll read a, a scenario and, and then, based on the facts in that scenario, pick the best answer. And notice here that there is a best answer that gives you five marks, a not so perfect answer that can give you three, a least correct answer for one and then one that just gives you zero points. So you really do have to look at different options and I think that's appropriate for this type of exam. It's appropriate in the real world. We often have to weigh different options and sometimes we could do, uh, you know, we get uh, the best answer. Sometimes we could have been better. So it's also kind of reflection of real world. Uh, notice the math here though. If you have to, uh, uh, if the possible total number of points you can get on any given question is five and there's eight questions, then that's total of 40, 40 points, then you have to get uh, at least 70%, that's 28. You have to get 28 of the possible 40 points uh, to be able to consider passing the intermediate level exams. Uh, if, you, if you do the math on 28, that could be six three-point answers for 18, plus two five-point answers for 10, 18 and 10 would get you that 28. So, so we definitely don't want to leave any questions unanswered on this particular absolutely exam. Absolutely. Not nice. And the exam itself is something you can, uh, they're administered online. Uh, you have a time clock going, 90 minutes. Uh, for the MALC exam, you get two hours, and there's 10 questions and not just eight. Uh, and uh, you're proctored online. You use your laptop, must have a camera. Uh, they're actually uh, either recording the session, and they look later that you didn't get out your notes and start cheating and that sort of thing or they're actually monitoring you through your camera uh, in, in live, a live proctor. Uh, and they basically, you know, you have to pan the room with your laptop to, to see that you don't have any uh, billboards on the wall with the answers and that sort of thing. Uh, the, it's very flexible scheduling. They're available 24-7. That doesn't necessarily mean your preferred time slot will be available, but there are time slots all day, every day. Uh, so pretty important there uh, and pretty flexible there. Okay. So what's next? 
Uh, well, use your IT Pro TV membership to access learning, uh, of which there's plenty of options available. Uh, and remember, you got to start with ITIL Foundation. Uh, I don't want to say that not just because the accrediting agency says so. It's just because you need a foundation, right? You need to get the basics down before you move forward. It would be very hard to move forward at the intermediate levels without having the foundation firmly uh, built. Right? And then leverage your partnership, uh, leverage the partnership with Passion IT Group. Passion IT Group is the accredited training organization that, whom I'm representing here uh, today. They've part partnered with IT Pro TV to deliver this, this learning. Uh, but because they have the expertise and because they're accredited, they live and breathe ITIL all the time, you're getting access to uh, lots of good information, including multiple practice exams. So uh, the, the technique for learning is walking through those exams uh, methodically, so getting some help on the exams themselves. But you also get real-world insights into how ITIL is practically put in play, right? Uh, you can have discussions at the online ITIL forum, and you can also gain access uh, to guide you through your exam preparation. Yeah, right. it's pretty cool, all the different supplemental information uh, study tools that you've offered here. If you guys are interested, interested check out IT Pro TV, um, and you'll see all the different videos that we have, the different course offerings. Now, Terry, I know you mentioned the cost for that particular master certification, but, and I know that over time, sometimes we see fluctuations in pricing, ah. but what kind of um, range are we looking about at for the different types of lower level certifications? Good call. They're basically all the same price, whether it's the foundation exam or the intermediate level exams, they're all in about the, the 250 range, right, give or take 25 bucks. Uh, I've seen, like you said, there are fluctuations in this. Uh, $250 per exam, uh, and uh, again, it's administered online, so you get a voucher. You get an electronic uh, voucher, basically a number, uh, and you uh, create your identity uh, through the exam uh, proctor, and then you schedule your exam as you wish by using that uh, particular voucher ID. So you pay for that voucher, you can then redeem that voucher uh, at some point in the future within 30 days, uh, and you're off and running on your exams. Perfect. Great information, Terry. I think I have a really good understanding about what ITIL is and where I can go to obtain those certifications, so thank you for that. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to tune in to ITPro.TV to learn and obtain that certification for yourself, those different certifications, then feel free to do so. Thank you very much.